Hello everyone, my name is Jill Fountain and I am the group owner of Building Tomorrow Today. This evening I have a guest from North Carolina. Now I have just shown my absolute ignorance about how far apart the towns are of friends who live in North Carolina. I do know a few people but I didn't realise the distance between all the towns and I think living in the UK Andrea's just mentioned that we've both been talking about a particular town that's four hours away. And I've said to her, that's halfway up the country. Absolutely, actually more than halfway up the country in the UK here. We have got no idea about the distances that you have in the States. Now, Andrea, we were talking about our different uh, areas of lockdown, what we're happening with COVID at the moment. And I know that you go into more depth in this and you're going to go into more depth of, of the problems that are occurring that you're seeing in a moment. But we in the UK, we are in lockdown. The children are not at school. Um, we've just heard that they're not going to go back for a few more weeks at the moment. People are allowed to go to work if they have to, but the majority of us are working from home and it is definitely not party time in the UK. We are not allowed to mix at all unless we are inside that sort of very limited family bubble. However, the supermarkets are still open and we are managing to feed ourselves. We're not, we're not absolutely grinding to a halt, but it, it does feel uh, that it's been going on for quite a long time now. And we are, if we haven't got used to it, we should have done. However, Andrea, you were telling me about some of the problem areas that you, you're seeing occurring. Can you go into that in more detail for me, please? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. And we were, we were having that conversation about the pandemic of COVID, but today we also need to remember that there was a pandemic going on before then. And that pandemic was the violence against our women and in particularly domestic violence. And to quote some things from our CDC, um, one out of four women in their lifetime will be affected if not abused by domestic violence and one out of six men. And that's increased during this pandemic time. What I tell people is what's happened is, and what I've seen in my work is, is that Okay, let's go back. Here. Let's talk about what <laughs> domestic on, violence is. Okay. What I want to do first is talk about what domestic violence is. Okay. Because a lot of people think that, oh, he did this to me because it was angry. It's not an anger issue. Domestic violence is a power and control issue. If someone is in a relationship in, in a normal relationship, there's a give and there's a take. There's power exchange. I mean, it's kind of like a, a tennis ball match. The power is going back and forth. In a domestic violence situation or a toxic relationship, one person gets the ball and keeps it. The other person's over here trying to swing, trying to decide whether to swing or not, but they no longer have any control. Right. That doesn't always come with anger because it's a manipulation thing. And so what happens with that is a lot of times the way to keep that control is to isolate that victim from their family, from their friends. Okay. That's one of the key things to, to one is a mind control piece. Um, and then but I want you to think about this. If someone you knew or you suspect it was being mistreated because they didn't come around much, now with this isolation, that controlling person is now being given license to hurt this person because now they don't have to worry about whether you see the bruises. Oh. Those children that were going to school, that maybe the teachers were keeping the, um, things at bay because the child couldn't be abused because somebody might see or the child might tell. So now you've isolated 
this 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 I say women because over ninety percent of the victims are women. I understand men are abused, but let's talk real. Now you've taken that family that was already being abused and you've told them now you have to stay in the house with the person that's abusing you and you can't come out. That's really scary, isn't it? So when you think about it on that scale, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a 40% increase of reported domestic violence. And then the numbers went down. So it's no longer being reported. Does that mean the domestic violence went down? No, it means that that person doesn't see a way out. Because even the agency, one of our local agencies is no longer, the shelter's not open anymore. Because of COVID, there can only bring half capacity of people in the shelters now. So okay. even if you thought about moving, where are you going? So I don't know about in, um, I know that there's all sorts of different areas and I am I'm, I'm no expert at all on this. All I know is that I have read that if you go to, in the UK anyway, if you go to certain um, shops or you make a phone call to the emergency services and give a, a, a word, they understand that there is a problem and the person on the phone can't speak. Or if you go to a shop, you can say a phrase and they know that you need help. Um, they've also said, although we are in lockdown, they've also said that if you are in a, any danger whatsoever within the household, then you are allowed to leave and seek help. But you're saying with the manipulation that is not, that doesn't always work. Is that it? What I'm saying is with <laughs> great things to have in place, but what you have to think of what happens when this happened. The mindset, I'm going to find you wherever you go. That's the one thing. And two, the first thing that usually happens is they take your phone and smash it. Or they take your phone and don't give you access to it. So you don't have that communication. So they are isolating you on yes. top of the isolation that we've already got going on. Yes. So this is your line of this is your line of business is helping the victims. Is is that right? So I have both. I have a nonprofit that I oversee right now um, that works with the victims and provide help and help in finding resources and a safe place. Um, and I have volunteers that help with that piece of it. And then I also have an LLC here that I um, provide support and training for leaders and advocates so that they can have the support so they can continue to um, work with those that they serve. And you, you mentioned leaders and leadership when we were talking a bit earlier. These are the leaders that you're talking about at the moment. Are they are they leaders of team or are they? In a lot of them, I say leaders as a servant leader. Some of them may be advocates right. that are actually working with victims right. or those at risk. Because I know um, I have a couple of them that are working with youth. But I also, when I say servant leaders, I'm talking about those that may be ministers or you may work with women. Okay. Because one of the things is if you're working with a congregation of women, if you're working as a coach with women in your group, I can guarantee you that somebody in there has been abused. When you look at the fact that one out of four women have been abused in their life, at some point and you have a coaching program or a group with 10 people in it, somebody in there is dealing with something they may or may not disclose to you. So it's the idea of having that conversation. Communication. Yes. It goes back to communication all the time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See, I always say we never do know what goes on behind closed doors. And, you know, as women, we are very good at covering up 
Yes. <laughs> we really are. We really and, and, are. I, and I can give you an instance. I knew a woman for years and years. I knew this woman and I, I, it was a colleague years ago and I never knew that she was being abused. I knew that she was a very timid woman and she was one of those that was constantly saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every time that was an issue. Well, um, her husband had a heart attack and died. And once he died, she was like, I'm upset because I loved him, but it's a relief. And then she told her story. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, one of my friend's mothers did, didn't, they didn't know what was going on and her husband died and it was like a completely new woman. Yeah. The relief, uh, but no, even her own children didn't realize the extent. The extent. Yeah. And so that's why I love to work with leaders like you and other women that are uh, entrepreneurs that are offering a service, regardless of what that is, and to kind of give you a safety space when you're hearing from someone and, and kind of give you some ideas of what could be going on. Because a lot of times people can't get to their next space because they haven't dealt with the baggage from the last spot oh, and wow. so you see this person like i said her she was so timid she was this but nobody knew why but you can also it also flips because like children they say that 60 percent of the children that have lived in a domestic violence home will either be victims or abusers yeah. so a lot of time the aggressiveness that you're seeing it came from <laughs> a protective barrier of being abused and it's we're talking about any type of abuse this is yes. what you're talking about we're not talk, we're not identifying the abuse we're saying it can be uh, physical but also mental it could be physical it could be mental it could be financial oh. it could be psychological financial financial so let's let's look at this. Let's say um, you're a housewife. Your husband provides for you. You have a wonderful home. You have a wonderful car. Um, your kids are taken care of. But you have to ask to go buy feminine products. You have to ask if you can buy shampoo. Or he brings it to you. You can't go to the store yourself. It could be something just that simple, or it could be the opposite. You go to work, you bring your money home, and I tell you how much you can use. Hmm. I've had some people that even they were smokers and their cigarettes were put in a um, safe deposit box or safety a safe, and they had to earn them. So this is all going back to the control thing that you're right. talking about. Right. So, how do you, so I'm interested, how do you help your clients? One, a lot of it is to realize that is I, I put a thing the other day that said you can't think out of a box until you realize you're in the box. Right. So a lot of people have to one understand what domestic violence is and he would have done it even if he didn't drink. But then going back into yourself is to bring that self-awareness and let you know that it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be sad. It's okay that you love that person and, and they were not able to love you. But now it's time to love yourself. Okay. And that goes into well-being and the mindset and right. confidence as well. Right. But doesn't, so I'm sorry about this, but doesn't it, as, as your clients get more confident, doesn't that in itself bring problems into the household? Well, a lot of them, um, it just depends. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's their wake up call that it's time to leave, depending on how, drastic it is and then sometimes they can't hear it anyway all right they're not in a place to where they believe okay. it 
and and again it's all about and and we we say this about our our clients i mean we're in a completely different field here but it's all about people's own timing right so it, and I suspect it's the same. It's, it's when they're prepared to listen or prepared to understand. It's their timing. Yes. Wow. This is very powerful, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but the key to it is, the key to all of it is learning to love yourself, be able to set some boundaries, because one of the things that people don't do, and I asked all the time, um, even when I spoke with teens, how many of you, when you decided that it was time for you to date, said, hey, I'm going to set some boundaries and this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. And it's not just a good looking man or whatever, but just some real personal things that I do. So here's an exercise that you can do. And I tell everybody. As women, we often hear the story of we're talking about a seat at the table, earning a seat at the table. Let's think about your life as being a table. Okay. Yeah. If we visualize our life as a table, we've put a circle or triangle or rectangle, however we want to do it. And we start looking at goals and setting goals. What do I need? This is the goal I want. This is what I need. This is the goal I want. This is the type of personality I need. I need the money and I need somebody who understands it. And really going into the depth of what that looks like, then you can decide who sits at your table. Who do you need to bring to the table? But you have to go further. Who do I have already sitting at my table that needs to be evicted? Some of them need to be evicted. Somebody needs to be just pushed back. Somebody, they can stay in the room, but I'm going to fix your plate and you got to go. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to love you from a distance. But then being able to set up those boundaries and communicating those things. So first you have to have a goal and that goal has to be so big that you're willing to fight for it. And sometimes it's fighting yourself to remind yourself that what you want to do. Because when you fall in love with someone and then they end up manipulating that love and using it against you, 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 you don't want to love anymore, not even yourself. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Because you're, you, you're too scared to. You're too I afraid. And you want to. And you're afraid you're going to be hurt again. You're afraid somebody else is going to hurt you. Or then sometimes you think that, okay, I need to go find somebody else that's going to treat me better. But you keep finding the same people because you haven't set the boundaries of love for yourself. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yes, because you do hear that, don't you, where people repeatedly, that's mm -hmm. not the right word, but, but they keep going, right. uh, they keep attracting the same type of person. Because you tell people how to treat you. You show people how you want to be treated by allowing them to disrespect you or by demanding their respect. And so it's all about boundaries. And, and the first word you need to learn is the good old word, no. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. You know it. I guess that one. And realizing that no is a complete sentence. You don't have to say no, but no, and no, because no, until no. And when you do that, your yeses are so much more powerful. Wow. Goodness me. That is, that's wonderful advice, isn't it? For all <laughs> of us, actually, in every, every um, aspect of life, not, you know, we are, it is, isn't it? In our in in our businesses, in our home life, in our family life, whatever we do, or whatever generation we are in or looking after, that is wonderful advice. And I tell people when I talk about these things about relationships and setting boundaries, I'm not just talking about your intimate partner relationships. Especially as women, 
I can probably tell you that you have at least one friend that's energy draining that no matter how well you feel, no matter how you pumped yourself up, when you talk to that person, you feel like this. <laughs> yes. I think we will have those. I'm sure right. we do. I'm sure right. all of us have got. And that's a toxic relationship that we will not get rid of because we think that she needs us. That's what happens in the toxic relationships that are intimate partner. It just goes deeper. Wow. Okay. So what, how do you get your clients and, and do you do workshops or do you do one to, I know you do one to one coaching, but how, how does your business actually work on that side? So I do coaching. I have a program for leaders that I do, but I have a program that I work with clients and those at risk. It's called the Jennifer Y. Merriman help program and help stands for hope, empowerment, life skills, and prevention methods. And so through my nonprofit, we work with um, women that are in a situation and we take them through this 16 module program Mm -hmm. and it empowers them to do more. For those that have already come out who don't need that intense of a program, um, I do some different things. Like I just finished Step Out of Your Comfort Zone, which is a four week class. Um, just different things like that, that I do that kind of help people to come in and especially leaders to understand the vicarious trauma from hearing other people's stories. Um, and so we just kind of put together pieces like that. And you work internationally, don't you? Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. I didn't expect this conversation when we got together. <laughs> now you know why I kept asking the questions I was, okay, how deep do you want me to go? What do you want me to talk about? What do your people need? <laughs> and in the end, we just said, well, let's just go live and see what let's happens. Let's just go live and have a conversation. Hey. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming along and joining us. It is, it is, um, a very powerful conversation and i think with the guests that we have in the, inside this group we're quite a small group really compared to a lot of others but the skills inside this group are amazing and the advice is marvelous i've enjoyed and it we, we never do know what's going to come out <laughs> of the conversation but again like you said we and we both said we don't know what goes on behind closed doors so i'm hoping that and i'm sure that this conversation not only to myself but to others will be such huge advice so thank you very much indeed for joining us well, thank you for putting it out there and i'm available anybody can message me on facebook um it's cheaper than calling me from the uk <laughs> Or getting those time zones mixed up. Or like, or time zones thing, just message me and um, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, this video, along with everybody else's videos that our guests inside building tomorrow today, will be popped on our YouTube channel. And um, Andrea, I will be posting that to you and you can share it wherever you want to use it as you will. Um, and um, do take a look. Uh, later on if you haven't got time come in and replay and ask any questions in the comments below and Andrea please feel free to pop pop in any of your your details your links or anything below on this video okay all right thank you very much everyone Angela just stay there Andrea just stay there just for a moment and I will end this so I'll say good night to everyone and I hope you have a good evening thank you